Hello, this is the Trade Tech Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 26th of November, ending Friday, December 1st, entering the last month of the year again already. Here's a look at the dollar index daily chart. Lost a little ground this week, but it was flat on the days we traded. <clears throat> of course, we had the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. on Thursday. Friday was kind of a waste of time as well, but we are near lows for the last two months. Let's go through the major pairs on the daily charts. Euro dollar, the inverse of the dollar, of course. That 13 sell signal back at the beginning of September was the high pound dollar. Uh, hasn't done much lately. This thing's been basically in a 300 pip range for eight weeks, seven weeks. Not very interesting. Aussie dollar slipped a little bit over the last month. Uh, came back up a little bit the other day. Look at how flat the pound yen is. Oof, horrible. Uh, Euro yen, and this is just not great trading. Look at this. Euro yen's basically in a... Uh, a 200 pip range since September, start of September. So it's really been boring here in Forex. I've been very fortunate to pull off the winners that we have, but you're not going to get a massive week in this environment. Let's look at the intra-week action. So this will be 30-minute candles. We'll start on the euro. This is what we did this week. So again, we didn't have any trading on Thursday for the holiday. We actually didn't make calls on Friday because the levels were condensed due to the action on Thursday. There was a little move Friday afternoon, but uh, nothing spectacular. If you just take all, if you take the Friday move out, then high to low for the week was only 150 pips on the euro, and then a little bit more when you add in Friday. Here's the uh, pound dollar high to low for the week is only 150 pips, period. Um, so it really wasn't a very interesting week, and you can see how flat Tuesday was, and there's just nothing going on. So let's focus instead on what's coming as we're into the last five weeks or so of the year, and then we will take a look. Uh, let's look at the economic data coming out. So i uh, got the uh, SPPI out of Japan at 6.50 p.m. on Sunday. That's Eastern Time. Monday, almost no data around the world. We got new home sales here in the U.S. at 10 a.m. And then we got a Fed member speaking that night. So that's, that's it. We're already into Tuesday. German import prices, uh, Bank of England financial stability report at 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, U.K.'s uh, bank stress test results, the FPC statement that comes with that. Europe's got their M3 money supply and private loans. Uh, Canada's got RMPI and IPPI, U.S. the goods trade balance number at uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's one of our big three uh, that we have each month. So we'll be half size ahead of that. Preliminary wholesale orders also here in the U.S. Housing price index along with the S&P housing price index. Consumer confidence at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday here. Richmond Manufacturing Index. Um, and Canada's got their uh, some, some notes from their Bank of Canada. Um, Retail sales out of Japan, and then we're already into Wednesday. UBS consumption indicator out of Switzerland, German preliminary CPI, French consumer spending and preliminary GDP, Spain's flash CPI, Credit Suisse economic expectations out of Switzerland. Um, we got OPEC meetings this week. Uh, UK net lending to individuals, M4 money supply, mortgage approvals, 10-year bond auction out of Italy, U.S. our preliminary GDP, that's actually the second look. That's not the advanced number that came out last month, so this isn't as big of a deal. Uh, Fed Chair Yellen testifies to Congress. We've got the pending home sales at 10 a.m., crude oil inventories at 10.30, Beige Book at 2 p.m. New Zealand's building consents. Industrial production out of Japan, HIA, new home sales out of Australia, business confidence out of New Zealand, consumer confidence out of the U.K. at 7.01, not 7, 7.01 p.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday night. Private capital expenditure out of Australia with building approvals and private sector credit. Uh, China's manufacturing PMI and non-manufacturing PMI. Going into Thursday, housing starts out of Japan, GDP out of Switzerland. Sorry about that. Um, we've got uh, Europe's German retail sales, French preliminary CPI, retail sales out of Switzerland. German unemployment, Italian monthly unemployment rate. Uh, out of That's European uh, ECB financial stability review. A lot of financial reviews. CPI flash estimate out of Europe and core CPI out of Europe. Italian CPI, unemployment rate out of Europe. That's at 5 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday. It's a lot of data right there. Current account in Canada, U.S. weekly unemployment claims, personal income and spending, and core PCE price index at 8.30 a.m. on Thursday. Chicago PMI after that. Natty Gas after that. Overseas trade index out of New Zealand that night. AIG manufacturing index out of Australia. So we had almost no data early in the week on Monday, and then look how packed we are in the back here. Japan puts out their household spending, national and Tokyo CPIs, unemployment rate, capital spending, and final manufacturing PMI. That's all out of Japan over an hour spot in the Thursday evening. 
Australia's commodity prices, Europe's uh, Spanish manufacturing PMI, Swiss manufacturing PMI, Italian manufacturing PMI, French, German, all of them, European broad manufacturing PMI, and then the UK's as well. And then finally, Canada, the unemployment number and the GDP um, comes out at 8.30 an hour before the stock market opens on Friday. The U.S. has a Fed member speaking, final manufacturing PMI, ISM manufacturing PMI, construction spending, and uh, that's it. And then also some point on Friday, we've got our total vehicle sales. So, you know, a lot of data back in the back into the week. Trade balance number is the big one for us. That's the half size day. Hopefully some of this will get the market moving. We still have a good month left. It's usually a decent trading time of the year until you get to that last week of Christmas. So hopefully something happens. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading week.